Hey everyone, I'm Andy Moore. I'm working on Fantastic Contraption, and I learned quite a few things working in VR, and I thought I'd share them with you. Uh, first thing is, uh, when you're working in VR, at least open VR, uh, there's the concept of a companion camera, which is typically in Unity the game view. Um, so this game view that you're seeing on your screen right now is not what the player sees, right? The player doesn't see the debug panel down the left side. The player doesn't see the mouse cursor floating around. The player sees, uh, you know, like the two circular discs of vision projected into their eyes. So this scene actually has three cameras in it, right? The left eye, right eye, and the companion camera. Well, I found with uh, OpenVR and SteamVR, the companion camera is great to have for like a debug, quick, useful thing. But I've ended up using my own camera. And I actually use an array of cameras. And here, I'll show you. Here in the debug panel, I've made this quick shortcut button. And if I click it, you see it switches to an external view. So you can see my headset sitting there in the middle of the screen, kind of the hands floating out in the middle of nowhere. I actually have a few different cameras so we can switch the view to different angles, which is great when we're filming, you know, for trailers or we're trying to get a, like a debug perspective or even just for casual observers sitting on the couch, you know, they might find it a bit more natural to view externally, like they're actually sitting on a couch and watching you build something in the space. So we also found that, you know, this is a great view and all, but uh, sometimes it's, you just want to move the camera a little bit or like get up and close and personal. So because the person in VR has no keyboard, right? They just have the headset and they have the two hand controls. I just mapped to the keyboard to move the camera. So you can see, I can actually, you know, use the keyboard to, to drive the camera around a bit and, you know, you can aim it in different directions, which is really great. Um, uh, you can set up the camera and you can do these swooping camera shots and everything. But it looks a little uncanny, you know? I mean, if you have, uh, if you have the, a game world that is very unnatural looking, right? Like it looks like, it looks like a video game. And then you have a human headset and human hands acting in that space. It creates a disconnect because you're, the game world is meant to be like unrealistic. The game world is supposed to be unnatural. Yet the headset and the hand controls are moving in a very, very natural way. If you've ever experienced the uncanny valley, uh, if you've ever seen something look very close to real but creepily not, it's the same kind of effect. It's the same thing, except I guess it's the canny valley now because now you have a very human, like very, very human thing actually in the space. So it, it's something to keep mindful of. It's, we find it kind of weird to watch a human in this space, but it might work for games with different aesthetics. And it might work if, you know, we put a head in here and maybe, you know, some strings attached to the controls, something, make it look a bit more human. Might look better, but we're still experimenting with that. Anyway, most of the time, we spend in first person mode, which is you're just seeing on the companion camera what the player is actually doing in their space. What I've added though is this little slider bar here. If I move the slider down to zero, and here I'm gonna unmaximize this because it's running a little slow in the screen capture. So I'm just using, you know, debug keyboard commands to, to move the camera around a little bit, right? And you can see if someone is moving their head around naturally in real life, our eyeballs are these awesome stabilizers. Our eye, like you can jiggle your head left and right right now while you're watching this video. And the video doesn't go blurry because your eyeballs are correcting for your head motion automatically. It's, we're just born with this ability. It's awesome. But someone in VR, it looks like this sometimes, right? Like it's jittering all over the place. It's terrible to watch. Like it's kind of, people's heads move too quickly. So because we're not actually using the companion camera that comes with OpenVR, we've assigned our own camera and you can see I have it here. Uh, let's see, where's the, you see here, this is the head and the eye. This is like the Steam VR eye here, right? Uh, but you can see we've turned off, uh, I believe it's the Steam VR game view in the head. We've turned off that camera. Instead, we've enabled a new companion camera, which is a smoothed first-person camera. 
and the amount of smoothing is controlled by the slider bar here in the debug menu. So you can see if I crank it up all the way, and then if I put in the same inputs, you see it's jittering all over the place, but it kind of has this dreamy floaty look to it, which again is great when you're trying to film a trailer and someone is jittering around like crazy in the VR space and you just can't capture smooth frames. So here I'll open up the scene view so you can see how much I'm jittering around the map like mad, right? But the camera's just smoothly scrolling around. And I mean, that's obviously extreme smoothing. I usually keep it down to a smaller level, somewhere around, you know, 10% or 20%. And you can see like, it's still a lot smoother, but uh, it doesn't make the people watching on the couch like sick to play. It's actually really, really handy. So of course, other than these, uh, you know, the debug panel here, if you want to get rid of this, you can. And we have keyboard shortcuts that accomplish all the same things. And you can change the smoothing and all the different cameras as well. To accomplish this, what we've done is uh, made a little companion camera script here, and I'll show you what that looks like. Alright, so we got the companion camera script here, and I'll post the source to it later so you don't have to stare at it, but it's really, really, really simple. Like, all it does is I just make an array of cameras, and I set, you know, if you hit the button, it just sets one true and the other one's false, like, like uh, active true or active false. So you can see all these cameras are disabled to start. And then as soon as the game starts up, it just enables one of these cameras and it just basically by default starts drawing to the screen. For the uh, smoothing, um, you can see we've just got this uh, quick script here and uh, all it does, <clears throat> so you have a quick script here and all it does is we use uh, smooth damp for the position and smooth, uh, which is here. And we use uh, mathf.smoothdamp angle to smooth damp the rotation of the camera as well. So very, very simple. A lot of uh, this other stuff is just extras you don't need to worry about. So it's a really, really simple system. It really makes watching someone else play VR a whole lot more enjoyable. And, uh, you know, getting extra info on the companion camera is really interesting. I mean, right now we're just using it to show the same world from different perspectives for everyone that's sitting on the couch watching someone else play. But imagine the possibility if you actually had a different game being played in the companion window that interacted differently from the person in VR. That's something to think about, eh? All right, cool. I'll post more videos on some of the other stuff we have going on here in the debug window later on. Thanks for watching.